Welcome to this brief introduction to streaming and recording video. In this presentation I'll cover how to get good audio, good video, how to live stream and record, and finally how to edit and share videos. Starting with audio. To understand good audio you have to ask yourself what is bad audio. You for sure all experienced recordings in which there was inconsistent volume, high background noise, or disturbing sounds from the voice such as plosives from words starting with P or B, or sibilants from words starting with S. The key to getting good audio is microphone placement. You want the microphone to be close to your mouth because of what is known as the inverse square law. The inverse square law states that if you cut the distance between the microphone and your mouth in half, you're increasing your volume by a factor of 4. Adjusting the volume afterwards will reduce the background noise by a factor of 4. You also want the microphone to be off to one side, like I have it, it's right outside the camera. The reason is that that way you're speaking past the microphone, thereby avoiding blowing air into the microphone when saying words like past. To be able to do this, you obviously need a dedicated microphone, and ideally also a microphone arm that allow you to place it exactly as you want. In addition to this, I make use of noise suppression software, specifically NVIDIA RTX Voice. This is software that runs on your computer and processes the audio stream using deep learning to identify the background noise and remove it from the recording. Moving on to the video part. To understand good video, let's again ask what is bad video? Over the past couple of years, we've all been at too many Zoom meetings looking up other people's noses, looking at videos with wrong exposure, being too bright or too dark, and very often looking at very grainy videos where you can barely see the other person. When presenting, you have to remember that the camera is your audience, and that means that you should look at the camera. To do that, you want the camera to be at eye level, which means that again, like for the microphone, you need an external camera so that you can place it where you want to have it. This can either be a webcam, and a webcam is fine for this purpose. But if, like me, you have a mirrorless camera, consider investing instead in a capture card, which costs about the same as a good webcam and allows you to get much better video quality. However, to get good video, you also need to worry about lighting. And in fact, lighting is more important than the camera itself. The most important light is the key light, which is the light primarily responsible for lighting up your face. The simplest good lighting setup you can have is what is known as Rembrandt lighting. To understand it, look at this famous painting where you can see how the face is lit up by one light source being a bit up and off to one side relative to the face. If you want a less dramatic view, you can use also a fill light to fill in some of the shadows on this side of your face. Let's get to the software side of this presentation, starting with OBS Studio. OBS is an open source software that is commonly used for both streaming video and recording video. It allows you to take audio sources, video sources, and screen capture and combine it. You can apply filters to each source, for example noise suppression to the audio or color adjustment to the video, before putting them together in scenes. The scenes are where you do your layout of different sources, such as what you see in this video, where you have a full screen video of me with an overlaid slide in the corner. One useful feature of OBS is that it can provide the resulting video stream as a virtual webcam, which you can then use as input for Zoom, Teams or other conferencing software. That way you can use the power of OBS while being on meetings. You can also live stream video to websites such as YouTube and Twitch, and of course record the video locally. If you record videos, you will next want to edit them, and for that I use DaVinci Resolve. DaVinci Resolve is a software package made available for free by the company Blackmagic Design. And it's a video editing software that is used not just by YouTubers, but also for editing many Hollywood movies. And with great power comes great complexity. So if you want to use DaVinci Resolve, be prepared that you will be spending some days learning how to use it. However, once you've learned it, it can do anything you want. On all my videos, I use DaVinci Resolve for doing sound processing, first applying depop filters to reduce plosives further, de-essing to reduce sibilance, 
And finally, normalize the audio levels so that they are consistent not just within a video, but also between videos. I do a little bit of video processing as well, doing color grading to adjust the colors further if I didn't get them quite right from the start, and editing the video to cut several different takes. I don't manage to record a video like this in a single take. And in the tutorial videos, to combine several different recordings. For those videos, I do a separate screen recording and then retime this video, that is, speed it up and slow it down to make it fit with a separate voiceover recording. When I'm done editing the video, I go to YouTube Studio. You are for sure all familiar with YouTube, but you may not have seen the creator side of it. There, you first upload the video, which is trivial, and then provide a custom thumbnail and a good title. This is important because that's what makes users click your video and watch it when it pops up in suggested videos or in their search results. Speaking of search results, you want to provide a good long description of the video containing all the relevant search words, as well as tags with additional search words. This makes your video more findable both in YouTube search itself and in external search engines such as Google. Finally, you want to make an end screen. The end screen is what makes people stick around on YouTube by suggesting them what to watch next. And this week, I won't suggest that you go watch one of my other videos. Instead, I've put together a playlist with some of the videos from other creators that helped me a lot when I started getting into YouTube. So go give them a view. Thanks for your attention.